Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And today we're going to go into the book of Ezra, the 10th chapter. Um, as we went into in the 9th chapter, we basically went into the transgression, okay, that not only Israel, but the, 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 the Levites, you know, the princes, the heads of Israel at this time, right, upon Ezra's arrival back to Jerusalem from, from uh, Babylon by permission of Artaxerxes I, they found out, at least it was brought to his attention, that this was basically what was going on as to where the, the people of the Holy Seed had not separated themselves from the heathens round about, in which they were taking wives of them and and, and having the daughters of the heathens marry their sons, and of course, leading them in the ways, in the practices, and the abominations of the heathen. And upon hearing this, Ezra was very uh, distraught. And so, here we are uh, in Ezra chapter 10, verse 1, reconciliation with God. Now, when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping, and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And as you read these these uh, these verses, you have to envision this, right? Because this actually happened. And Ezra, being held in high regard, they knew who he was, right? They knew, uh, especially with the with the manner of man that he was. So to see him in this in this sort of you know, very, very uh, a mournful, distraught state where he's praying, he's weeping, you know, they're like, damn, you're like, yo, like, you, you really messed up, you know, you really messed up this time. And so, of course, now you can imagine the people, you know, their wives, their children, everybody's all in this somber mood, crying and, and, and all that. That's what it says, right? They wept very sore. Verse two, and Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. So we went off, but there's still hope. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives, and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it be done according to the law. So pretty much let's make this right. You know, we, we can still like repent from this. Verse four, arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee, be of good courage and do it. So he was, he was exhort, exhorting uh, Ezra which that was one of the main reasons, right, why this, the Lord sent Ezra here, because Israel was going off and, and, and they needed one to, to guide them and lead them in the right way. Since at this point, we didn't have kings and, 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 and all of that anymore. OK, uh, verse five. Then Ezra or then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, Levites and all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word. And they swear. So everybody agreed at this point that they're gonna um, put away their, 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 you know, the wives of the heathens and, and the children that are born of them, and basically repent of this this uh, deed that they have done. Verse six. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God, and went into the chamber of Johanan the son of Eliashib. And when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity, that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem. So the word was going out, the announcement was going out, that everybody who was over there, everybody has to gather in Jerusalem. It doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're at, stop what you're doing, and, 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 and make your way over here. And that, and that whosoever would not come within three days, the 
according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. So you can you can sort of estimate, right, that roughly maybe the people that live the furthest from from the temple or from this region would, would at least even uh, three days should be enough time for even them having heard the news to be able to make it there. So maybe that's one of the reasons why they gave that span of three days to give people enough time to, you know, to get ready and prepare. And for those that might have lived further to make the commute. Verse nine, then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together onto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month on the 20th day of the month. And all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. So that even goes to show you that the Most High was obviously not happy, right? So you can imagine this day being a very like, uh, you know, a very gloomy day. You know, it's, it's raining, people are cold and they done messed up. <laughs> you know, it's like you get in trouble and your parents call you. And now everybody, especially if you're in a family of maybe not just you, you have siblings. And all y'all done messed up. Now y'all all getting cold. And everybody's like, shit. You know? Verse 10. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord Yahweh, God of your fathers, and do his pleasure. And separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. But the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without, neither is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed this thing. Damn. I mean, them heathen, them heathen women must have been fine as shit, because damn near everybody, <laughs> you know, it was a uh, 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 transgression in this matter. But anyway, they're making the case, right? Like, it's already raining. There's so much of us. This isn't going to be a one-day thing. So, verse 14, Let now our rulers of all the congregation stand, and let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities come at appointed times. And with them, the elders of every city, and the judges thereof, until the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us. So instead of everybody being here at the same time, you know, just, just set it to where city by city, you know, those that have transgressed at a certain date, you know, they would come and the matter would be judged. Verse 15. Only Jonathan, the son of Asahel, and Jehaziah, the son of Tigva, were employed about this matter. And, Meshul and Meshulam and Shebathai, the Levite, helped them. And the children of the captivity did so, and let's actually take a look here. Let's see. Let's take a look at the word employed. Only John and the son of Tegbo were employed. All right. I mud says you have to stand, to remain, to endure, to take one stand, to stand up. To make a stand to station okay so let's go back and take a look at how some of these other translations word it once again so the nkjv says only jonathan the son of asahel and jahaziah the son of tikva opposed this and meshulam and sheba uh shabbatai the levite gave them support yeah so majority of these translations all go with the the term opposed or stood against and based on what we just read, it would seem as though they were actually opposed to, to um, you know, this 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 basically like this this idea that the people came with. Now, could it have been because you know, for whatever reason it may be, maybe they were they were like, no, we should deal with it right now, or whatever the case is. <clears throat> it doesn't really expound too much on it, but it does highlight uh, them, you know, being being as it says, employed about this matter. Um, so it could mean that, right? Or it could mean that they were, they were like those that didn't, um, you know, who knows those that didn't partake in this. Let's see. 
Anyway, the children of the captivity did so, and Ezra the priest, with certain with certain chief of the fathers, after the house of their fathers, and all of them by their names were separated, and sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. And and this this see this goes to show you right that like this is practical, right? There are some cases that that arise, situations that arise that not everybody's going to be in agreement with the idea or the, with the plan of action going forward, right? Some might have different ideas, you know, but that's that's all part of of of, of life, right? The practicalities. Anyway, verse seventeen. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. So they started this, what, the 10th month, the first day of the 10th month. And then, you know, it took them a couple of months to, to handle everybody's case. And by the first month, every, everything was, was, was taken care of here. And among the sons of the priests that were found that, that had taken strange wives, namely the sons of Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, Maasai, and Eliezer, and Jarib, and Gedaliah. Now, what's interesting here is when you read in the law, there's, 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 um, there are laws pertaining to marriage, right? But they are even more strict when it comes to the priests, right? And and I think even the high priest is even more. But for the priests to have to have um been even partakers of this 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 matter here you can sort of understand why it was that ezra was so upset when he when he heard this verse 19 and they gave their hands that they they would put away their wives and being guilty they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass and the sons of emer hanani and zabadiah and the sons of harim maaseiah Maaseiah and Elijah and Shimeiah or Shimaiah and Jahiel and Uzziah and the sons of Pashur, Elionai, Maaseiah, Ishmael, Nathaniel, Josabad, Elisa, also of the Levites, Josabad, Shimei, Kelaiah, the same is Kelita, Pethahiah, Judah, and Eliezer. Of the singers also Eliashib, and of the porters Shalom, and Telem, and Uri. Moreover of Israel, of the sons of Parosh, Ramaiah, and Jeziah, and Malchiah, and Miamin, and Eleazar, and Mal Malkijah, and Benaiah. And of the sons of Elam, Mataniah, Zechariah, and Jahiel, and Abdi, and Jeremoth. And Eliah, and of the sons of Zatu, Elio, <clears throat> Elioenai, Eliashib, Mataniah, and Jeremoth, and Zabad, and Aziza, and of the sons of Bebai, Jehohanan, Hananiah, Zabai, and Athlai, and of the sons of Banai, Meshulam, Maluk, and Adaiah, Jashu, and Shail. And Ramoth, and of the sons of Pahath Moab, Adna and Kelal, Benaiah, Maaseah, Mataniah, Bezalel, and Benui, and Manasseh, and of the sons of Harim, Eliezer, Ishijah, Mal Malkiah, Shimaiah, Shimeon, Benjamin, Maluk, and Shemariah, of the sons of Hashum, Mataniah, Matata, Zabad, Eliphalet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimei, of the sons of Benai, Maadai, Amram, and Uel, Benaiah, Bedaiah, Chelul, Vania, Meramoth, Eliashib, Mataniah, Matanai, Jaasau, and Banai, and Binuai, Shimei, and Shelemiah, and Nathan, and Adai, <clears throat> Adaiah, Machnadabai, Shashai, Sharai, Azariel, Shelemiah, Shemariah, Shalom, Amariah, and Joseph, 
of the sons of Nabal, Jael, Mathihiah, or Mat Mat Matithiah, Zabad, Zabina, Jadau, and Joel, Benaiah. All these had taken strange wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. And that pretty much brings us to the end of Ezra the 10th chapter. So as you can see, now this mainly dealt with the putting away of this iniquity that um, that was committed in Israel. Of course, like it says, even by the elders, the priests, all of them. Okay, and they give you a, a nice account and record of those that were found to be um, to have partaken of this. So with that, Lord willing, this was edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.